Not long ago, my wife and I got to take our dream vacation to Japan. 10 wonderful days of sightseeing, great food, and exploration. But also during that trip, I had an instrument finding subquest. I had three goals. I wanted to one, find something cheap. Two, I wanted to find something unique, maybe something I'd never seen before. And number three, I wanted to get a shamisen. More on that later. So join us on our trip, grab your chopsticks, and see if we can find some instruments that we can bring back to the studio and test out. First stop, Asakusa, Tokyo. Hey guys, welcome to Japan. We are here for our 10 year anniversary, but I figured what a better time to come and try to find some cheap instruments. So we started walking around Asakusa when a big penguin on a moon caught our eye. All right, we are outside of Don Quixote in Asakusa, and we are going to see if we can find any instruments inside. If you don't know what Don Quixote is, it's basically Walmart, except split on about 10 different levels. They've got a little bit of everything. They've got food, they've got home goods, and they even have anime goods. Hmm. No instruments here. It's also Japan's largest discount store, and if there's anything I'm going to be looking for, it's going to be a discount. Have you found any weird instruments yet? No. Oh. Last, no shamisen. Shoot. But eventually, we were actually lucky enough to run across some instruments. All right, we've officially done it. We found the first instrument of the trip. So here are all of the automaton uh, things that you can get. Uh, you've got some great anime characters. You've got Hello Kitty. And uh, we've got a little guy. And I'm, I'm kind of partial to a little Kirby. So we'll see. I might get myself a little instrument here. First one on the trip. So with our discount shopping complete, we ran into the checkout line and left the store. All right, and uh, we are done inside Don Quixote. We saw a lot of really weird stuff in there, uh, but we also saw Kirby, and I got him. So now I've brought him back to the studio and I have not even touched him yet. I haven't even opened him up. I've waited all this time. After purchasing him and getting him outside, I, I read a little bit on the box and I started to feel guilty for a couple reasons. Number one, I don't actually know if this is an instrument. I think it's like a little thing that plays along and like maybe plays a couple tunes. I don't know if it actually plays notes. Second, it just looks so tiny and I wanted to get him his parent. So I went back in the store and I got his mama. So we're gonna start with the little baby and we'll see if we can even get some notes out of him. All right, so sadly you can't actually pick the notes you're gonna play. It's just, just pushing it over and over. Changes the pitch to, I think, a, some pre-recorded song. I don't know what song it's trying to play. This, not being an instrument, is not a big deal because this, is an instrument and I'm very excited to open her up. This is an automaton and I will explain what happens and what it is when I get it opened. All right, batteries are in. It's got two volume settings and it has three different pitch settings, a low, medium, and a high. Uh, we'll test all of them out. You press into this part and it will play whatever pitch you are holding. Think violin, not guitar. So you have to be able to position your fingers exactly on whatever pitch you want to play. Since the mouth is right over the speaker, uh, opening this little guy up makes it go wow, 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 wow. Here's the lows. Here's the mids, here's the highs. That's the automaton. I will say this one is definitely unique. So all things considered, I've at least gotten something that is pretty darn unique to Japan. So we left the store and headed back to Sensuji Temple. I don't know what I'm videotaping right now. We're just walking down the street. Then he's just walking down the street. We're just walking down the street. But it's pretty. But it is pretty. Travel YouTube. 
Uh, we just finished up Don Quixote, and now we are walking back to Sen Suji Temple, uh, which is not really a music youtube -y thing. It is just a travel anniversary thing. So we're taking a pause here so that uh, Jenna can put something in my bag. All right. It's mine. It's got no, no YouTube professionalism, that one. It's like she's just here for fun. This is business. It's a business trip. So we've got a little bit of time. Uh, we're going to try to find something akin to a musical instrument around here. We'll see how we do. Jenna remembered walking by a stand with a bunch of bells on it, so we went to track it down. Searching for a bell, searching for a bell. Gonna find Jenna a bell she can use in her backyard. And then we can look at it at home and say, oh, that's such a nice bell. We got that in Japan. Ah, that, uh, that counts as an instrument. Wait, ooh, a pretty sound. So after doing a little more sightseeing in the area, and of course getting Bob Bilby's fortune, we set our course to Akihabara. On our way there, we happened upon an art show in Ueno Park, so we figured we might as well walk around a little bit and take in the sights. Of course, I'd never try to tear Jenna away from a set of flowers. Where are we at, Chase? We are in a Ueno Park. I remember the name of it. And we are on our way to Akihabara. Uh, maybe we'll find some instruments there. Maybe we'll find some uh, otaku stuff. That's cool. We'll see. It should be a good time, though. So, after a bit more walking, we finally made it to Akihabara. Akihabara is known to be a haven for anime fans, gamers, and electronics. This was just one of the many anime merchandise stores. Shelves and shelves filled with figurines, posters, and DVDs featuring characters from popular anime series. So we spent the rest of the afternoon indulging our inner nerds before we finally happened across another store that had some instruments in it. Hard Off is a Japanese thrift store that specializes in hardware, but they also have a section of musical instruments. A thrift store was the perfect place for me to try to find a cheap instrument. And that's just what I did. All right, we are here in Akihabara and we are going to uh, check out a instrument that I found. So with zero play testing, I bought it. Another instrument in hand, we walked out of the store and I made sure to triumphantly show off my new goods. And here it is. This is the Yamaha Venovo YS something something 100. This is their soprano saxophone version uh, of like a fake saxophone. What I do know is that it retails for about $80 and I got this one for about 40, which means that if it is in good playing condition because it is used, I've gotten a heck of a deal. So hopefully we can get one of those little checks off. To start off with, this is a very sweet case. I'm gonna open it up and we'll see what we're working with. The only thing I've done with this instrument so far is I've cleaned it. That's it. I have not played a single note since I came back. So I'm just like super excited to finally get to try this bad boy out. Comes with a little cleaning cloth here. Cool thing about this, uh, I did a little bit of research on the way home. You can actually play this with a soprano saxophone mouthpiece and read. Uh, this is the one that just comes with it. Yamaha, as you can see. Uh, it comes with a synthetic number two read. So that is what I'm going to be playing with. We're gonna try it out. Uh, if it's anything like a soprano saxophone, uh, I don't know how it's gonna play because I've never played a soprano saxophone. We're looking at uh, recorder style finger opening. So you just got to uh, cover the hole uh, as you play, so not really saxophony in that respect. Uh, there is nothing over here for the left hand pinky, but there is over here. Uh, this did not come with any sort of materials or fingering charts or anything inside the case. Uh, it just came with the swab. So if this has like crazy fingerings, I'm not gonna know what they are. I'm gonna have to look them up. So we're just gonna give it a, a you know preliminary playthrough here. We'll see if I can even play it. Ooh, there's a note. Ooh, you know what? It has a neck strap hole. I'm gonna grab my neck strap. All right, neck strap's doing nothing. I'm gonna lose it. So far, I'm not super impressed. I'm hoping it's just my playing ability or something down here maybe is not closing all the way.
Yeah, I'm currently not able to get the uh, lowest notes out. I think what I'm gonna try to do is uh, I'm gonna get an actual read. I'm gonna have to come back and uh, I'm gonna have to get a different read for this one. I'll get a more in-depth review of this guy later, but for now, this thing is unique. I just need to get it to a work. So come back on a later video and maybe I'll be able to get this thing going. So with that, it was time to leave Tokyo behind and head to Kyoto. All right, where are we at? We are in Kyoto. We're in Kyoto. So we made it to Kyoto and we walked to our hotel, which was a real pain in the butt. Uh, but we got there, we dropped our luggage off. But with our luggage finally out of the way, we were allowed to explore around the area. And after a little bit of Googling, we found a traditional Japanese instrument store. So we headed straight there where I found my first shamisen of the trip. As well as some other goodies. Oh man, I would go hard on those bells. And this is also the first time it dawned on me that shamisen are very expensive. Okay, that's not gonna happen. But that realization didn't stop me from walking around the store. There were still tons of great things to look at. I almost pulled the trigger on getting one of these bad boys, but they turned out not actually to be shamisens. But they were shansen, which kind of sounded like a banjo. The hang drums are too expensive, I already had all of these, and being a percussionist, most of the things on this table are something that I already owned in some form or another. So I ended up leaving this store empty handed and thought maybe I'd come back later. All right, so we uh, are on our way out of the uh, shopping center in Kyoto, and uh, we have both struck out. I did not end up getting a shamisen yet. I'm going to look into it more because it's not as cheap as I wanted it to be. But yeah, we're gonna try again tomorrow. We'll see, maybe that'll be the day. So with that, we walked back to our hotel and started fresh the next day. All right, we are in Kyoto full day. Uh, this is our one full day in Kyoto. We have a rough plan of attack. We are going to go to the uh, Geisha district, which is called what? Gyo. Gyo. Uh, so we're gonna go there. There's a music store there we're gonna check out, uh, which I am personally kind of excited about. I am pretty sure now looking at the prices of Shamisan that I'm not going to be buying one on this trip. So, uh, you know, it'll be fun to look either way because uh, I enjoy that. Uh, so we'll look at, so maybe we'll find some other, another cheap instrument there we can check out and uh, afford because uh, that's not the one. The one I looked at yesterday was like a snakeskin head uh, and it was called something slightly different. Uh, and uh, that one, though I may have been able to afford, was not actually what I wanted. I wanted a shamisen. So uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the deal there. So right now we are on a 20 minute walk and uh, we'll maybe fill you in later when we get there. We were walking to Kiyomizudera, which is a Buddhist temple in Kyoto. And I have to say, it was probably one of my top locations of all of Japan. I definitely recommend it if you're looking for some place to go in Kyoto. Though I do have to say, it was a very long walk up a very tall hill to get there, but it was very worth it. So after checking out the temple, we did a little bit of shopping before finally heading to the Geisha district and our next music store. We are on our way to the uh, other music store that is in Kyoto. So we're going to check out to see if they have any sweet instruments, maybe something cheap. Uh, maybe a shamisen that's like five dollars. That'd be fantastic and I would get it. So we'll just uh, walk there. All right, we went into that shop. Uh, I recommend that shop. The shamisens in there were awesome looking. Uh, we got to play around with the flutes a little bit, so that was very cool. Uh, but we are we are priced out as a little too expensive. So uh, uh, yeah, not not this trip, sadly. So now we go umbrella shopping, something a little cheaper. But we weren't quite done with our Kyoto shopping and exploration just yet. And while running around, we actually happened upon another music store, and this one was huge. This was more of a typical music store that had mouthpieces, saxophones, and the like. And unfortunately, the prices were typical as well. I think I found the, the grand thing here. Makes you look like you got Godzilla hands. 
Though there was some cool standout instruments like another Shanson, some melodicas, and even some electronic saxophones by Roland. Though sadly, none of them called to me. So we checked off one of Jenna's bucket list items and played with some otters for the rest of the day. We also got kind of lucky in that we just caught the tail end of a live performance on the way back to our hotel. With that, we were back in Tokyo and Akihabara nighttime. Now with a fresh new mission for Jenna. We're on the hunt for a blue otter. All right, we found the store. Now we just need to find the otter. He is in here somewhere. We know it. We can feel it. Mm. Yeah, this is what Amazon has. Dude, yeah, the beefy boy. Okay. All right, what did we just get done doing? Um, I don't know its name. Akiya. The Akiba or the shop. Akiba shop. Yeah. Anime. Yeah, anime. Okay. With like ten floors of it, and we finally. But more importantly, otters. Yeah, so we found her otter. But it was good, it was fun. I had no instrument luck today, but that's okay. We had lots of good time. And the next day was looking to be even better as we headed to Team Lab Planet. Team Lab Planets is an immersive digital art museum. It has interactive art installations that you can actually walk through and experience yourself. It's a very unique experience that I recommend if you have the chance to check it out. But we still had one musical destination left. All right, we are finally on our way to the Guitar Street in Tokyo off of Akihabara. So we'll see if there's any, any instruments there. And who'd have thought that a place called Guitar Street, they'd have a lot of guitars. But not only guitars, they also had stores for wind instruments, stores for strings, and oh yeah, did I mention they had a lot of guitars? My favorite store was a place called Wind Pal. I mean, how could you say no to this guy greeting you at the door? So you walk down into the basement and you're immediately greeted with discount mouthpieces, awesome saxophones, and a few instruments that I'd never even heard of before. Sadly, none in my price range. All right, just got out of that basement store and I found something that I actually could afford. And it was one single reed. So I got a bamboo reed. What could be more Japanese? Here is the reed. I am not going to open it today. I'm going to save this guy for a future reed video. So you'll get to see the difference between the plastic, the cane, and now the bamboo reed. So look forward to that one. So after finishing off Guitar Street, we headed back to Akihabara where I actually took a chance to escape from the rain inside of Hardoff, where I found another instrument. I had actually seen this instrument the first time through, but I didn't want to buy two instruments at the same place. But seeing as I probably wasn't going to be getting a shamisen, I decided to treat myself. And here it is, or at least the case. Same sort of deal. This is used, and right now, currently, it's going for $93 on Amazon, and I got it for about $40 from the Hard Off store. So this is the Nouveau JSAX 2.0. Again, this is a used instrument. I don't even know if it works. I've never played it. So you get to experience with me the joy of seeing if it will even work. So uh, the case is really nice. It's a hard case. It slides open and it's like super cool. This is a nice fingering chart comes with. It also comes with uh, a lot of things that I can't read. This guy we need to put together. <laughs> Making some music. That is the Nouveau J Sax, and you know what? I got an instrument that actually seems to work, and it was 40 bucks. Thank you, Japan. So did I check off every single quest item I had going into this trip? No, I didn't. But that doesn't mean it still wasn't the best trip I'd ever been on in my entire life. The experiences, the sights, 
the little moments we got to spend together as a couple sharing 10 fantastic years of marriage. And of course you can't forget the food. There it goes. So yeah, Japan is a fantastic place to go if you're musically inclined, but that's just scratching the surface. Oh yeah, and did I mention how great the exchange rate is? We've got our food in tow. And uh, we have so, uh, five cheeseburgers, fries, McNuggets, and I got an ice cream for 12 bucks. I miss that about Japan. I miss the cheapness of it all. What? Even though I spent uh, quite a bit of money on this trip. <sighs> but no matter how magical, exciting, or cheap a trip is, there's nothing quite like coming home and trying to teach your kids how to use chopsticks. I think they've got a better handle on it than I do. So thanks for watching the video today, guys. Thank you to these fine people for being my Patreon supporters. And thank you to you for liking and subscribing this video. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and do check up, uh, up here to my other videos. I've got some other great instrument reviews up there. And uh, yeah, I don't know, like and subscribe. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot about this. As you do in a grocery store.